Coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine, one place, two autumn adventures. Then touring two far from ordinary candle shops in the Poconos. Plus the efforts to restore this spectacular park for the public. The story of a family's stewardship of this special destination along the Delaware. And history combined with a new art gallery in Milford pairs nicely with a new wine and cheese shop. And the river trail system that's becoming a reality connecting Pocono communities. And it's all on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Hello everyone, welcome to the October episode of Pocono Mountains Magazine. I'm Brianna Strunk. And I'm Deanna Fontanez. There are so many ways to experience fall foliage in the Pocono Mountains this season here in our small town of Jim Thorpe, a beautiful scenic train ride. Mm -hmm. You can see it on the trolley, scenic chairlifts, or even on the trails. And be sure to visit PoconoMountains.com for our fall foliage forecast when planning your October outing in the Poconos. That is updated weekly through the end of October. You'll really see exactly where and when leaves will be at their peak across the region. And perfect to meet you guys here now because it's time to catch this train. <laughs> but before you board the Pocono Mountains this fall or any season, plan ahead. Head to PoconoMountains.com, find out where you can park and how you can enjoy this place, especially on UTVs like Deanna will in just a moment. But it's time to catch this train, ladies. Let's go. Right, let's go check go. it out. You know I love a fun outdoor adventure, and today I'm going to show you two that Pocono Outdoor Adventure Tours offers all year long. Let's go check them out. So I'm here with Yamari, manager of Pocono Outdoor Adventure Tours. So Yamari, if someone's never been here before, what do you guys have to offer and what can they expect? So we offer our long guided UTV tours. We ride behind the Pocono Raceway and we have that access that no one else can get yeah. to. We ride right under the grandstands. We have access onto the track. We can walk our guests on, on off season. Mm -hmm. It's just an, an experience that no one else can offer you. We also have trails across the road. We have a challenge course. It's a bunch of dirt mounds surrounded by concrete barricades. It is a ton of fun. And we've also added some mud pits. We're going to run everybody through them. So it's a very dirty activity. It's super so muddy. Expect to get dirt. Lots of fun. <laughs> you guys have vehicles for two people and four people? Yes, and we also have one six-seater vehicle, which is really great for families that want to ride together. So this is a great activity for families, groups of friends, bachelor, bachelorette parties we were talking about. Yeah. Yes, we get a lot of groups of bachelorette parties. It's like the new thing, it's really <laughs> cool. Um, but the tour is really designed for anyone, novice riders, experienced, and it's a great family activity. I love that. So with everything you just told me, it sounds very exciting and thrilling. So I think we should go check it out. Let's do it. All right. Hi. Hey, so this is Seth, He's gonna be my tour guide today. So I just got all geared up. Now Looks we're... like you're ready to go. Yeah. You wanna have some fun? Yeah. Let's go. All right. Deep belts first. Okay. The trail is about eight miles. We can do a, anywhere from 10 to 13 miles on a tour in a given hour. about coming out on the trails and doing this? Um, well, you know, we get people, I love watching everybody have a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> they have, sure have a lot of fun. So as you can see, I've changed outfits and now I'm ready to go try paintballing. So let's go inside and get geared up. Here with Brian, he's going to be the ref for my game. So Brian, what can people expect with paintball? Paintball is a very fast paced, uh, very intense game. For the most part, we'll break up into two teams, uh, start on opposite sides okay. of the field, and then we do have a couple different objectives, such as capture the flag or just eliminate the other team. Okay, is there a strategy behind it? There's a couple different ways that you can play it. Um, I know a lot of people, their first time, they tend to stick towards the back more. Uh, it makes for a slower paced game. Okay. But then usually by the end of it, the people are more willing to run up and just really get into some good fire so what fights. what should I do? I would, say, up. <laughs> I would say be aggressive, uh, don't sit back for too long. Definitely okay. try to get yourself to a better spot. Should we go check it out? Of course. All right. Game starts in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Players head, let them out. So as you 
as you guys can see, I got hit a little bit with the paintball. So Yamari, if people want to do both activities that you guys offer, the UTV and the paintball together, do you guys offer packages like that? Absolutely. They actually come at a discounted rate for paintball if you sign up for the UTV tour. It's best to take the paintball first and then UTV. <laughs> yeah. You get a little wet, a little cold yeah. afterwards. No, I loved it. I had such a blast today. Thank you so much for having me. My team was not ready for you today. <laughs> you shot all of them. She yes. is amazing, guys. Watch out. I had so much fun. And it's always fun when it's the boys. You got to show them what girls can do. Right. So if people want to check you guys out, where can they check you guys out at? You guys want to go to PoconoOutdoorAdventureTours.com. You want to hit either the UTV book now or the paintball. We have both links available on and the social site. media platform? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Yelp, every platform imaginable. All right. So make sure to check them out. I'm Deanna Fontanez for the Pocono Television Network. Coming up, we're going to show you why so much damage from a winter storm several years ago led to a lot of work on the behalf of the National Park Service over the years to get Child's Park here back open for the public so they could enjoy views like this. Just in time for Halloween, we know the perfect place with plenty of candy and so much more. Coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. This episode of Pocono Mountains Magazine will be right back. But first, let's check out how the Poconos have been making the news lately. Congratulations to Mount Airy Casino Resort, voted one of the nation's top five casino hotels. That's according to USA Today's 10 Best Reader's Choice Awards. A huge crew of volunteers went out across the region last month to pick up the Poconos. Helping hands from various communities and companies made a huge impact on the Pocono roads, removing debris and litter, all in spite of some rainy weather during Pick Up the Poconos Day. Watch for the next chance to volunteer in April 2024 for Earth Day. If you want to reduce the stress of arriving here and ensuring that you're going to have more time enjoying Jim Thorpe instead of sitting in backed up traffic, this is the way to go. WNEP TV highlights the new reserved parking and shuttle service available this month during Jim Thorpe's popular Fall Foliage Festival, held every Saturday and Sunday in October. Visit CarbonCountyPA.gov to reserve your spot in advance. Any time of the year, the short trip up to the Pocono Mountains offers you and the family so much to see and do. Breathtaking views. NBC Phillies Sheila Waco visited the Poconos this time with Ardiana Fontanez to check out Bushkill Falls and the Storebridge Line. Two great ways to spend a fall adventure checking out the natural beauty of our Pocono Mountains. Fall in the Pocono Mountains, it's like a little bit more of summer except it's wonderfully crisp and really colorful. For the best of our colors, check out our fall foliage forecast to know when to plan your visit. Fall in love with our fall. It's one love affair that you'll never fall out of. Visit PoconoMountains.com. Plan in advance to experience Jim Thorpe's fall magic. Reserve a parking spot and take a shuttle from Mock Chunk Lake by purchasing a parking pass. Take a scenic train from Pittston to Maqua, Redding, and Wilkesbury, or bike along the beautiful DNL Trail from Lehigh Inn. Make the most of your fall adventure. This spectacular public park in Pike County, Pocono Mountains, George Childs Park is a gem of the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area, but it's been closed since March of 2018 after a huge winter storm knocked down tons of trees here and meant that the National Park Service had to work all that time to design and now rebuild a lot of the infrastructure here, including a new accessible path to see these gorgeous waterfalls here. Let's take you on a tour of the renewed George Childs Park. One of the first public recreation spaces in Pennsylvania. I think it's ahead of all of the state parks. So George Childs definitely had a vision and he wanted to have this as this woodland paradise and escape from the heat of the city for everyone. Um, whether you were wealthy or whether you didn't have money and you just needed a place to be able to get away, get into the fresh air, um, see the waterfalls and just the spectacular beauty of the area. It has been years, but Kara Deutsch and the National Park Service are so close to welcoming the public back to this park. He created this 
you know, full waterfalls and bridges, just meandering through, um, through this ravine with three waterfalls that are some of the most spectacular in this part of Pennsylvania. Over its nearly 150 year history, George W. Childs Park has been a gem of the Pocono Mountains until that winter storm nearly six years ago. Some of our really tall, old hemlock trees that are still here. We have some, we did lose a bunch um, in that 2018 March snowstorm. In that nor'easter, we did lose a lot of trees and that was the reason that we were closed um, because there was so much damage to the trails, to the trail bridges, and we really had to rehab a lot to get it back um, for visitors. These photos show the sheer scale of devastation. Hundreds of trees toppled, and a huge task left for the National Park Service to get Child's Park back to its former glory. The bottom line is that, that we have to make it safe for the public. We also have to follow certain rules and regulations that are in place to make sure that our culture and natural resources are protected first before we do anything. Not only will Child's Park be restored by mid-2024, it will have some new accessibility features, including this paved path. We've redesigned the trail from the parking lot down to the first bridge. So we've put down a blacktop surface that will increase accessibility for wheelchairs and those with disability. We also put down another type of trail surface that will actually give access to another part of the park that was not previously accessible. Just like these falls and the ruins of a former woolen mill within Child's Park, their constant presence awaits the return of families, explorers, nature lovers. The National Park Service plans to reopen Child's Park by mid-2024 Watch for more info as that time gets closer. In the meantime, a reminder of how this restoration is part of the park's long history arc, with a commitment to what George Child's vision was for this special place. In the end, Mother Nature is in charge. We are not. We can be relentless as, as she is. Um, we want people to get back here. So we, we're doing the right thing. We're rebuilding this to its former glory. And um, the challenge will be the future because Mother Nature is always there. But um, we're here to manage this for the public for future generations. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. With Halloween coming up, it is all about the candy this month. And we know the perfect place where you can find plenty of that and so much more. Let's go check it out. Welcome to American Candle in Bartonsville, where we are more than just great candles. We offer something for everyone. So American Candle here is over 34,000 square feet. Our candy room is the best room in the whole entire store. Over 250 barrels of candy. We have European candy, the very nostalgic old-fashioned candy like the lemon drops, the root beer barrels. So we also have a great sugar-free section where it's not just sugar-free hard candies, but very good fudge and chocolates. Everyone's a kid when they come into our candy room. Our rolled ice cream is a fabulous part of this store. It's a really great experience, not only fun to eat, but fun to watch. It's a rolled ice cream where it's a specialty one where we can make it anything you want with cookies and cream. We do it strawberries and whipped cream. Or for the adults, we do a boozy one where we roll in a shot of alcohol. We have a wonderful craft beer and wine selection. All of our wines are supported with the local wineries within our area and then we'd also do the craft beers which are local and then also carry some of the regular domestic beers. One of the other great places in American Candle is our fine jewelry and collectible room. We have a great collection from Jim Shore. We carry Pandora. We have all the bracelets and charms and necklaces. Brand new line which we're very happy to introduce is the E. Newton bracelet. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. I've been shopping here forever. I love the Pandora. 
It's fabulous. I love their Myra bags. They just got the whole new fall line in. I also like Jim Shore. Well, they switch stuff over a lot and they move stuff around. You don't know what you're gonna see every time you come into the store, you know? It's like, oh, that's new. Oh, look, they got sunglasses in. Oh, look, they got capes in. They've got, you know, new purses. So American Camel, though, is not just for all the girls and the women out there. The men find a lot of things they like here, too. We have a great sports section and a great line called Dr. Squatch, which a lot of men know. American Candle has been in business for 45 years, and of course, it's American Candle, and we make our candles here. Everything from our jar candles, our pillars, our votives, our scented tea lights, we make it right here. So specialty candles, birthday candles, wedding candles, you name it, it's designed here at American Candle. But wait, there's more. In our boutique, we offer many brands. Vera Bradley is one of our larger handbag collections, as well as the Myra bags. We also will have our lotions from the Naked Bee. Jonas is another one of our goat brand products. We are your local Dansko retailer. So we do have the opportunity to go to different shows, trade shows throughout. And we are currently you know, looking forward to our fall season, uh, bringing back those items and showing them to our customers that are uh, now proudly on display in the Poconos. We are your gift shop, but we are also an attraction that many people just don't seem to realize that we have here in the Poconos. And that's just a taste of everything American Candle has to offer. So make sure to stop by and get your candy for Halloween, Christmas, or really any time of the year. All right, it's time to go shopping now. With the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. All right, you're gonna wanna hold on because we have a great story coming up here on Pocono Mountains Magazine about a historic property complete with its own suspension bridge here along the Delaware River. Come join us on our adventure. Plus, we're visiting another candle shop in the Poconos with all the scents and scares just in time for Halloween. This edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine is presented by St. Luke's Monroe Campus and East Stroudsburg University. Wayne County is developing a trail system. We put together a trails group. We can actually create a river trail. We are designing a walking trail from Homesdale towards Hawley. People that live here don't even know that this exists. The Lackawaxen River Trails consist of trails in Honesdale, White Mills, Hawley, and Lake Wallenpaw Pack. We hope you make it out to Wayne County and try one or all of the trails that are offered here. Don't miss our two-part series on the Lackawaxen River Trails right here on the Pocono Television Network. Join me on the Pocono Television Network as I chat with Sierra, the woman behind the rapidly growing family business of Pocono Whitewater. Hey, it's Jim Hamill, and here at Pocono Television Network, we love to take you on great adventures across different parts of the Poconos, on the grid and off the grid. And so here in Pike County along the Delaware River is a very special property that has history, it is serene, and the owners, multi-generational owners, have a great story to tell. This is Sylvania Tree Farm. Enjoy. From way up high, Sylvania Tree Farm is as picturesque as the Poconos get. The sparkling Delaware River, 1,200 acres of forests and fields, historic homes, and the McKay family right in the middle of it all, right where their ancestors started it all nearly two centuries ago. It's a family legacy. Started back 1848, right down there was the hotel, the Selden Manor House, and there was a train station. Sylvania Tree Farm is in the village of Mast Hope, a stop along the railroad way back then, now a somewhat secluded getaway from the hustle and bustle of daily life. It's the customers that will write in the guest books or tell me personally that what makes it special is its serenity. They have an opportunity to come to a place where they really need to 
decompress, they want, to, they want to explore nature, they want to just have time away from the everyday life and lines and traffic. It's about that. It's, that's what makes it special here. For more than 40 years, Jane and John McKay have restored and rebuilt this destination along the Delaware. Cabins built tucked in the woods along Mast Hope Creek. Bridges for your feet and your four tires to access it all and camping right along the banks of the river. It's awesome, it's, uh, I mean, it just totally reminds me of being a kid myself, because uh, my brother and I would be down here doing the same thing, so it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Meet the seventh and eighth generations of the family, Nick and wife Gina and their boys, carrying on a tradition of sharing this special place with other families who seek the same. I'm so grateful for Jane and John to opening up this property to other families so they can have the same experience as well because, yeah, who doesn't want to see their kids just enjoying this gorgeous river? Plus, we have two uh, grandsons now that carry on the name, the tradition. They love it, my children love it, and they're involved. Nick and Gina took us for a ride throughout the property on the trails where you can be with nature in a place that's held such importance over centuries and even the native peoples. On those trails, yeah, if you, you're you walking on the grounds of where the Lenape Indians, some say Lenape Indians, walked. Um, they were in the cliffs. They used this area for fishing and game and then hit the Delaware River to head back to Easton in the winter months. The tree farm features flowers and veggies in the summer and blazing fall foliage in autumn. And in winter, it's tucked right next to Ski Big Bear and down the road from the lodge at Woodlock. Sylvania Tree Farm stands on its own. However, just ask the McKays who've dedicated their lives to it through the years and for many more to come. We lose track because we're here, but if you go away, you can't wait to get back. We're just so fortunate to live here and raise our boys here, but you know, we also have this great responsibility to teach them about, you know, the tree farm and the river and to care for this land. I look forward to seeing where they're going to uh, take it. And I, it'll be a new direction. And it'll be, it'll, that's what young, the next generation brings to the table. Future and past intertwined like the river and the land, and the family who shares it with us all. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Still ahead, we last saw George and Connie Roberts on the DNL Trail, and now they're showing us another trail in another part of the Poconos. Coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine, downstairs in this historic property in Milford, they've got some great shops, including this new wine and cheese shop. And then upstairs, Forest Hall Studios that has some internationally renowned artists on display. You're gonna to wanna to check this one out after this. advance to experience Jim Thorpe's fall magic. Reserve a parking spot and take a shuttle from Mock Chunk Lake by purchasing a parking pass. Take a scenic train from Pittston to Maqua, Redding, and Wilkesbury, or bike along the beautiful DNL Trail from Lehigh Inn. Make the most of your fall adventure. All right, stand by. Sound speeds. We have to get the word out about a great Pocono Mountains vacation. Wait, don't wait for five years. Well, if this fine team can't figure it out, I shall invent it myself. Good luck with that. <laughs> Don't we already have the travel guide? Yes, for five years and PoconoMountains.com. Note to Chris, Pocono Mountains Magazine, no travel guide. For your free guide, go to PoconoMountains.com.
Hey there, it's Jim Hamill in historic downtown Milford. And this place has so many different spots for you to check out, but especially this historic property, Forest Hall. It's got so much history and a lot of cool shops, but we want to show you the focal point in just a moment, an art gallery. Come on, check it out. Here it is. Forest Hall Studios, upstairs in Forest Hall, a historic property with some internationally renowned artists up there to check out. And it's all part of Milford Hospitality Group's big plan to bring a lot of people here to appreciate art and culture. Come on, check it out. We try to tie in the history with some culture and um, you know, Milford has a good arts background and a good arts scene, so we felt like it just was a nice fit. Building on the success of its other properties in town, Milford Hospitality Group has elevated the experience for this historic property. Ornate in so many ways, but in many ways a blank canvas for the Forest Hall Studios exhibits now and in the future. Their vision here is to bring international talents, regional talents, and then also an incubator program uh, with rising stars of the industry. And the first one was Vincent Crusoe, uh, that was Shadows, that's currently on display. Uh, Hunt Slonim is the international star. Steve Rosato tapped curators Christopher Makos and Paul Solberg to adorn this space with art, paintings, sculptures, and more, all on two upper levels of Forest Hall, all free to the public. This bluestone exterior slate roof gem is a sister to the historic Gray Towers, also commissioned by the Pinchot family at the turn of the 20th century, first used for summer classes for the Yale School of Forestry, and now works of art. This is just one more added experience for people, um, another attraction. Uh, it's the history of the building that they're gonna be attracted to. Um, and then it's also tying in, like we said, that deep-rooted arts that's here um, throughout the town. And downstairs at Forest Hall, shops of all kinds line the block, even the perfect spot for a little trim off the top. And new in Milford, Three Hammers Wineries, Milford Wine and Cheese Company, a perfect pairing for what's upstairs in the art galleries. We're super excited to be down here in Milford too. There's just so many unique shops and so many different people, you know, coming through the town of Milford. It's historic. Um, which is really cool as well. It's definitely got a story behind it. This shop has samples, Three Hammers wines to pair with cheese from all over the world in a beautiful space in the heart of Milford's historic district and directly below a true to form art gallery with rotating exhibits. They've invited us to serve some wine at some of the art shows. Um, the opening art events upstairs, which has been awesome as well. They've got really cool artists coming in and um, their work is incredible. Not only the space is beautiful, but the art is beautiful as well. And the people that you meet is also really awesome. I guess it's almost like a, a small renaissance in town. You know, it, it literally pairs very well downstairs with what we have up here. Uh, it's a great afternoon. People can go enjoy themselves, have some wine tasting. Um, and then come up and, and look at some fine art and, uh, and make a whole weekend out of it. During this particular exhibit, 120 pieces are on the wall. 40 bunnies by artist Hunt Sloanum, known worldwide and available on display here in Milford at Forest Hall. It's an internationally known artist in such a historic building in a beautiful town that borders the National Recreation Area. To learn more about the art and artists at Forest Hall, head to forresthallmilford.com and be sure to visit to pair wine and cheese, as well as history and art. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. More than 300 cents all under one roof. We'll have the story behind the scents and scares at this Destination Campbell shop coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Interested in a medical career? Consider St. Luke's if you want to be a doctor or a nurse. Based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, we are the area's only four-year medical school and the largest provider of medical residencies and fellowships, and the country's longest-running school of nursing. Train at an organization that is nationally recognized in education, patient care, and quality. See why we are ranked the nation's number one teaching hospital. Where you train matters. The best doctors and nurses train at the best hospitals. St. Luke's University Health network. In the Pocono Mountains, a new season is just around the corner. 
And no matter what the season, there's always something exciting happening. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. The Four Season Pocono Mountains. Visit us at PoconoMountains.com. Brianna Strunk with the Pocono Television Network. We are at one of my favorite places today that combines scents and scares. More on that haunted piece in just a minute. But first, we are here with the owner of Candle Shop of the Poconos in Swiftwater, Linda Schlier. Thanks for having us. Sure, anytime. I'm so excited. We're going to dive into a candle making demo. But first, tell us a little bit about Candle Shop of the Poconos. So we have been in business for about 17 years. My family has been in the candle business for over 50 years. We are a big attraction in the Pocono Mountains. We get lots of tourists. They come in, they buy candles, they buy gifts, they take a haunted tour. And inside is more than just candles. It's really like an experience. You can go in and, and walk out with a lot of different souvenirs and candles, but other items as well. Yep, we have holiday items during the holiday season, and we actually have uh, seasonal rooms for every holiday, so we it's always Halloween or Christmas in the candle shop. And if Linda looks familiar, her family uh, is known as really involved and well-known business owners in the Poconos, although her family does not own Pocono Mountain Harley-Davidson anymore. They did previously and really grew it into the destination dealership it's known as today. Also owned Schlier's Towing. So where does a candle shop factor into that? So my family came from the candles. We had Pocono Candle for 55 years over in East Stroudsburg, and that's where I learned to do all the candle making. It was a great, great way to live to learn all the stuff that I did through my parents. And and it made you want to open your own candle yes, business. definitely. Very cool, so no better person to show us what a candle making demo is all about. So how do we get started? All right, so here we have hand poured a paraffin blend wax, and we are going to, we put our scent and our dye in here, and we are going to pour it into these 32 ounce jars, just like this. And what scent is this? This it is Mac really good. Macintosh apple. Mm. We're gonna pour it all the way to the rim. We heat our wax to 180 degrees in big 500 pound vats. And then we are gonna take a wick. Every, all of our candles have two wicks and are all double scented. So one candle does 700 square feet. And how many candles are being hand poured a day and how many are available in the gift shop? So the gift shop, we have 350 different scents wow. and about five or six different jars. We can make about 300 candles here a day. They have to process overnight to be hand topped in the morning. Everything is double scented and ready to go for the weekend. All homemade candles and you, I feel like yep. you can really tell and yep. smell the quality. Yes, they're very good. It's the best candle around. And another really cool part of your business is the haunted tours you offer yes, here on site. Yes. So tell us about that. So when we bought the candle shop, the basement was really awkward down there. There was lots of weird stuff going on. There was cages and different kinds of stuff. The former people that owned it told me never to be open after five o'clock, that there was some kind of history down there. So we just bought it and just went on. And here to find out, it was a biological research center in the basement. He was trying to invent antivirus for smallpox and yellow fever. And his name was Dr. Redwood Fisher. Eventually he moved on and bought Sanofi's property down here at the bottom of the hill. And it was called Pocono Laboratories back in the 1900s. Come, see the monkeys downstairs, see the cages, and take a tour with Robin. And so when you bought the building, you experienced some paranormal... Crazy stuff. Like, like what? Just like there was like noises and you could smell, it smelled like a zoo. Um, like where they kept all the monkeys downstairs. And then your hair would raise up on your arms. You feel like someone was touching your hair. Just crazy stuff. And you know, I never believed in any of that stuff. When we bought this store, I'm the strongest person you know. This kind of creeped me out a little bit. And then Animal Planet came to do this story because they've heard so much about it and they were wigged out about it and they did a beautiful, beautiful show called The Haunted on Animal Planet. 
And when people come shopping at the candle shop, they can actually check out that Animal Planet episode because you have it playing on yes, rotation inside the store. We do. We have it on the TV so you can see what it's all about. And you can come on the weekends and take a tour with Robin. You can call also because sometimes during the week we'll be open too. But you can get your tickets up at the candle shop or online at mycandleshop.com. And I love how there's always different inventory here. Personally, I come to Candle Shop of the Poconos to get my autumn mums. So yeah. when people come, locals and tourists alike, it's always a different experience at the Candle Shop. It is, it is. People come for, we pour certain scents during the fall and Christmas, and they just love the, the new scents. And what's really great about Candle Shop of the Poconos too, is you're close to a lot of the other Pocono attractions. We are. Mount Airy Casino Resort is just up the road. So is Kalahari Resorts and Conventions, Saki, the Frogtown Chop House, a lot yes, of different places. Yep. So it's easily accessible to come visit you. It's really nice. Everything's all in one location here in Swiftwater and Tannersville. And back to our candles. So they have to set overnight. Yep, these will sit overnight. She did very well on her wicks. Oh, I'm They're so glad straight. I passed the test. And then <laughs> tomorrow they'll top these so that they will look like this. Mm. So flat and ready to go on the shelves. Macintosh and candle. Macintosh apple, ready to go. It's a great place, it's a great gift shop. It's, it's magical. I think everybody should come up to the Poconos, take a beautiful ride up here. There's a lot to do up here. And if somebody wants to learn more before stopping by, how can they do so? What's the website? So the website is mycandleshop.com. They can also call the store at 570-839-1844. We're open every day, seven days a week, nine to six. Very cool. Linda, thank you so much sure. for having us here. I think it's time to go shopping. Yes. I'm Brianna Strunk with the Pocono Television Network. We'll see you soon. soon. Still to come on Pocono Mountains Magazine, find out how this brand new river access is part of a much larger trail development effort connecting Honesdale, White Mills, and Holly along the Lackawaxen River and along land as well. That's coming up. At East Stroudswood University, you will study with cutting edge technology, you can perform in the classroom, field, or stage. You'll get involved on campus and off. You can have fun preparing for your future. Fall in the Pocono Mountains, it's like a little bit more of summer. Except it's wonderfully crisp and really colorful. For the best of our colors, check out our fall foliage forecast to know when to plan your visit. Fall in love with our fall. It's one love affair that you'll never fall out of. Visit PoconoMountains.com. Hi, it's Jim Hamill, and there's some great news to report here in the Pocono Mountains, including right here in Wayne County along the banks of the Lackawaxen River in White Mills. This area where I'm standing right now, up until recently, was just grass along the river, but recently construction crews completed this river access here as part of the Lackawaxen River Trails project that is connecting Honesdale with White Mills and Holly by the river and eventually by land. And so PTN commissioned George and Connie Roberts to create a two-part series about Lackawaxen River Trails, what it means for the region, and I'm so very proud to be just one of many people supporting this trail development effort right here in the Pocono Mountains. Please enjoy. Wayne County, Pennsylvania is located in the northeast corner of the state. Its county seat is Honesdale, and it's a great place for recreation in the great outdoors. You will find many trails in the county waiting for you to explore, hike, and relax. Several great ones make up the Lackawaxen River Trail System. And someday, the plan is to link them all together from Honesdale to Hawley. But you don't have to wait you can enjoy them now. 
The story of the Lackawaxen River Trails starts in 2017, when the Wayne Pike Trails and Waterways Alliance was formed. The following year, the Alliance partnered with the Wayne County Commissioners to do a trail feasibility study. We put together a trails group and we started talking more and more about outdoor uh, recreation. We were charged with looking at the things that would add to the quality of life in Wayne County. And the number one thing that came up was creating trails. Uh, when we did the feasibility study about this trail system and how to connect all these communities, everybody always thinks, oh, well, the first thing people want to do on trails is bicycle, or the first thing they, they want to do is run or jog. Number one was to view nature in a natural setting. The final report of the study concluded that a multi-purpose trail is possible and public support is very strong. The result was that it was feasible to put together a water and hiking trail from Honesdale down all the way to Hawley. Based on the feedback, a trail concept plan was created. It depicted the large scale and long range vision for what the trail system could become. Using the River, Railroad and US Route 6 corridors, to connect key community resources, existing trails, recreational facilities, economic hubs, and cultural opportunities. We're kind of looking at all modes of transportation, bike, paddle, pedestrian, and automobile, separating them and making clear connections as best we could, so it's a great start. The plan is to connect Honesdale to Hawley and Lake Wall and Pawpack through a trail system. The starting point was right here in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. There already are some set points, White Mills, Indian Orchard, and then Holly, of course, which um, double as both, hopefully, future trail access for hiking. The real aim is to connect communities along the spine of the Lackawaxen River, which historically has always been part of development and settlement uh, in the community. The Lackawaxen River Trails consists of three modes of transportation. A walking, hiking trail, which may or may not include biking. What we're calling the pedestrian trail, primarily adjacent to the train tracks um, between Honesdale and Holly, would be wide enough and allow for biking, walking, and several other kind of pedestrian-oriented means of travel. A biking trail utilizing Route 6. We have a bike route along Route 6 um, that's already kind of recorded by PennDOT. You don't have necessarily bike lanes, but you have the right to bike. And a river trail consisting of the Dyberry Creek, the Lackawaxen River, and the Wallen Pawpack Creek. One of the first things being addressed is river access. Up until now, there has been no public access points on the Lackawaxen River in Wayne or Pike County. And so the effort was the individual communities are doing a great job, Homestale, White Mills, Hawley, but they're not connected. And it's not obvious to people. The people who own private property along the river in Wayne County, it was one of their major complaints. People have to trespass, they have to park and walk on our land, which is private, in order to get to the river. So we said, well, we can solve that problem we can actually create a river trail from Honesdale down to Holly. We can create public access points with parking and handicapped accessibility and trails. Access to the Lackawaxen River is planned for three areas, in Honesdale at Sycamore Point, in White Mills, and in Holly near Bingham Park. The Holly access is operational. Because of the connection from Honesdale and White Mills down, this is a great exit point for kayakers coming the whole distance. This is also unique in Hawley. We're at the confluence of three rivers, the Lackawaxen, Middle Creek, and the Wallenpaw Pack. So you get a wonderfully di diverse viewscape of nature when you're kayaking here. A new access point at White Mills has just been completed. So in White Mills, there has been also a Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, as well as DCNR funding to help create uh, honest and true river access for the public so that if you're coming down from Honesdale and you want to take out there you can and there will be a precast uh, boat ramp there as well and some comfort facilities because it's equidistant almost between Honesdale and Holly right there. And one is planned for Sycamore Point in Honesdale. 
There's expansion uh, plans now to make this handicap accessible for fishing. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a little bit better roadway where people can come down here and put their kayaks in. People that live here don't even know that this exists um, because it's not super accessible. It's pretty steep to get down to this spot. Um, but when we're able to grade it and make it a real boat launch and, and community space, I think that this is going to be a real gem for Honesdale. A much more difficult step is developing a walking trail between the towns. So we are looking and designing a walking trail from Homesdale south going and east going towards Hawley as the next section because you've got planning takes time, funding takes time, and you always need to be working on that even while the other areas are under construction. But you'll see a lot of change in the next 12 months. Now let's take a look at some of the trails that do exist in Wayne County that you can take advantage of right now. There are four located in Honesdale. We start in Honesdale, where there's several trails set up in the community. You can get started right here in Central Park. Central Park is a block from downtown next to Wayne County Courthouse. It contains a four-tenths of a mile loop for an easy seven-minute walk. This is a gentle 3% or less grade. Most wheelchairs and strollers can be used here. There are benches along the route for resting. This trail is great for running and walking. Dogs are welcome, but they must be on a leash. Central Park has a playground, seating areas, monuments, and walking trails. The park also hosts numerous events. From this point, you can walk into downtown Honesdale and see the many shops and eateries. Nearby, you'll find a more challenging trail. This is the famous Irving Cliff with a great view of Honesdale. Irving Cliff and Gibbons Memorial Park is a 55-acre public park accessible from the bottom of the cliff at Park Street and Riverside Drive or from the top off Cliff Street. Irving Cliff provides panoramic views of Honesdale. Irving Cliff uh, gets its name from Washington Irving, uh, the famous American author. Uh, he was friends with Philip Hone, who uh, found, helped found Honesdale as part of the DNH Canal. Back when they were friends and they came here, uh, Washington Irving actually hiked up the cliff and you know, made some notations in a letter to his sister about it, so uh, that's where it gets its name from. Atop the cliff is the Richard Dick Smith Memorial Star, which shines each holiday season. A native of Honesdale, Smith wrote the song Winter Wonderland in 1934. There is one and a half miles of trails here, with several connecting side trails off the main trail. Just outside of Honesdale is Apple Grove Park, near Wayne County Fairgrounds, off Route 191. While there are no trails here yet, there are plenty of places to walk. It's an open green space with parking and a picnic area adjacent to Veterans Park with a pavilion. So we have the opportunity at Apple Grove to develop a dog park and trail system there thanks to DCNR funding that the borough has obtained. And that would also allow for different amenities surrounding that too, from recreation for kids, maybe some uh, opportunities to get onto the Dyberry Creek as well. When I grew up, I used to go down there swimming all the time in the creek. Uh, it's a beautiful area. There's some nice pools there. A lot of people use it for fly fishing and fishing in general. From Apple Grove, we work our way back into town at the Park Street Complex. When the county took that over, uh, they made a lot of improvements uh, to the area down there, uh, both in the playground area as well as a walking trail along the Park Street complex. And it's a river walkway, and it used to be uh, overgrown on the riverside, and there was a fence because it was an old school and a playground, and uh, you couldn't even see the river. People didn't even know the river was there half the time. Here you'll find an elevated pathway along the Lackawaxen River with a nicely maintained gravel surface. There are picnic tables and a playground along the trail and access down to the river where you can rest. This trail ends at Park Street, where you can walk into downtown Honesdale to connect with the other trails we've mentioned. We have talked at the hospital about building possibly a, a more um, a standard kind of walkway between the Park Street complex, the Storebridge area, and, and the River Bridge, and then 
into downtown Honesdale. That hasn't happened yet because we haven't gotten that far yet, but it is certainly on, on the agenda somewhere. Because we have borough property on either side of the Lackawaxen River as it comes down from the Park Street complex that we'd like to over time also develop some trail systems there too to integrate Gibbons Memorial Park and then down through the Lackawaxen River Trails launch at the county property as well at the point there. The future of the Lackawaxen River Trails is to provide a trail along railroad tracks out to White Mills, about six miles away. At the corner of Route 6 and Elizabeth Street, you'll find the Dorflinger Factory Museum. Tucked between the museum and the historic White Mills Firehouse is the White Mills Community Trail. This uphill, downhill path travels along a tributary of the Lackawaxen River to Lollipop Pond. It's adjacent to the homes on Charles Street, which once housed workers at the glass factory. The museum is a great place to check out local history. It's open April 15th through December 15th, Wednesday through Sunday. We're here at our next stop, which is a network of several trails. That's right, Connie. This is the Dorflinger Sudum Wildlife Sanctuary in White Mills. And it has several different trails here, branching off of the main trail, which is 2.7 miles long. The parking lot is located off of Elizabeth Street in White Mills. As you make your way down towards Trout Lake to the start of the trails, you'll find a very clean bathroom facility with running water. You'll also find the Dorflinger Glass Factory Museum here, which is open May through October, Wednesday through Sunday. There are three great trails here that take you into the forest that surround the sanctuary. The Springhouse Trail is an easy 1.8 mile loop that takes about 40 minutes to complete. You can combine that with the Rock Oak and Old Meadows trails to make a 2.7 mile loop trail for a one hour walk. Within that loop is the Flying Squirrel Trail, which is a 1.3 mile loop trail that takes about 30 minutes to finish. Our walk through the sanctuary took us past the outdoor amphitheater. Concerts are held here throughout the summer. We eventually made it out to a meadow where we found the beautiful Sudan Pond. More hiking through the forest revealed an assortment of different plants and animals along the way. Here at the property you'll find these maps, like this trail legend here, which explains where you're at. You find the dot on here, and you can see the different trails that make up this whole sanctuary. And they're all marked with the trees too. There's colors on them that allow you to figure out, you know, which trail you want to go on. As you wind your way through the 600 acre preserve, we go through changes in elevation and the trail surfaces change. Good hiking shoes or boots are recommended. We end at Trout Lake where we take a break on a swing and relax. The Wayne and Pike Trails and Waterways Alliance is a not-for-profit entity. It acts solely to generate funding and oversee the development of the Lackawaxen River Trails. You can donate by becoming a trail keeper. Go to LackawaxenRiverTrails.org or contact Ryan Jennings at the Foundation 570-251-9993. That was a great ride on the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway here in Jim Thorpe. And with the Lackawax River Trails, hopefully someday they're a lot like the DNL Trail here in Carbon County. An exciting time for the Pocono Mountain. Another exciting time, the autumn season. So make sure to head to PoconoMountains.com to check out our fall foliage forecast and just all the different ways you can experience the season right here in the Pocono Mountains. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you next month. Thank you.